Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you on this Mother's Day is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Adi just read for us. I share with you today at verse 23. The Apostle Paul is speaking and he says, When I observed all your objects of worship, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers here today. Today we thank God for you. We thank God for your strong Christian faith. We thank God for being willing to share this great news about Jesus with those around you. Today we certainly appreciate all of you. And I just want to compliment all of you today on being great mothers. Now, everyone loves a good compliment, don't they? I mean, when you hear a good compliment, it makes you feel good inside. It's nice to hear good compliments. But every once in a while, you hear a backhanded compliment. Now, what's a backhanded compliment? Well, that's when someone gives you a compliment that seems good, but on the other hand, it's more like an insult to you. There was a woman named Sarah Garner who overheard her boss at work saying this about her. Sarah is very lazy. Whenever I give her a job to do, she always finds the quickest and the easiest way to do the job. She is a highly efficient woman. Now, when you look at that compliment, at first, it seems okay. I mean, he called her highly efficient. But on the other hand, he said she was lazy. You know, those kind of backhanded compliments could be applied to what the Apostle Paul is saying in the Word of God here today. Paul here, he's been going throughout the entire Roman Empire, sharing with everyone he could the good news that Jesus really was the promised Messiah. Jesus really was the Savior of all people from sin and death. And Paul always tried to find the easiest way that he could share this good news about Jesus with others. Now, he certainly wasn't lazy. Paul was one who wanted to get right to the point so people could understand what he was saying. So here in the Word of God before us today, Paul is in the city of Athens, Greece. And he goes to the Areopagus, which is really the, the meeting place where the, the leaders, the noblemen of the city always met. And so he goes to them, and as he's going to them, he's upset that he's seeing so many idols there in their city. So Paul starts talking with these leaders, city leaders, about these objects, about their religious beliefs. And Paul here begins with what we would call a backhanded compliment. Because Paul says to them, I can see as I'm walking around here that you're a very religious people. Because I see all of these statues made to different gods. But as I was walking around, I saw there was an altar and it had the inscription to an unknown God. Let me tell you about who that God really is. Now, the words here that Paul uses for this phrase, very religious, it comes from two Greek words. The first Greek word means kind of like to dread something. And the second Greek word is like uh, deities or gods. So what Paul is actually saying here, he's literally saying they're afraid of many gods. Paul is saying that these people here in Athens are afraid of many gods. Now, these people of Athens, they had lots of gods, didn't they? They had a god of health, they had a god of their crops, they had a god for their children. But they didn't want to miss any god. And so what they did is they had this one per statue, this one altar that had the words to the unknown God. It was like they wanted to have a just-in-case God. So Paul's words here, they were not so much of a compliment 
as they were an insult to the people here. A few week, years ago, Newsweek magazine had this story about 30 cursed tablets that archaeologists had found in Athens, Greece, in a well in a cemetery. Now, these cursed tablets, they were very common years ago. What people would do is they would write down a curse on a stone tablet. And then they would want to give these stone tablets to underground gods. So what they would do is they would take these stone tablets, they would put them in a well or in a cemetery, so they would be close to these underground gods, hoping that the underground gods would do something about their enemies. Well, let me ask you today. Does it matter what God we have? If we're a good person, and if we believe in some higher power, does it matter what God we really worship? Well, the early Christians here believed it did matter. They believed it really did matter. And that's why they were willing to endure persecution and beatings and imprisonment and even death to be able to tell people who the true God really is. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul is doing here, isn't he? He is trying to share with the people who the true God really is. And Paul makes some very important points here today. First of all, Paul wants us to know that God wants us to know him. God wants us to know who he is. Paul says here, God made the world and he made everything in it. God also made you and he made me. God did this so that we would seek him and reach out for him and find him, even though he isn't very far away from us. For in God we live and we move and we have our being. Not only does God want to know us, but God wants us to know him. And you see, that's the problem with worshiping idols here. The idols, they're, they're dead. The idols, they, there's no way you can get to know them because they're dead. But idols really are about people's needs, aren't they? That's why people had gods for things like rain and for good crops and when they were suffering. The idols were really about what they needed in their lives. The true God knows what really is best for us. The true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit wants us to know all about him. Secondly, Paul says here that God wants to have a relationship with us. God wants to be a part of our everyday lives. There's a website that's called adoption.com, and it's for parents who are searching for children whom they gave up for adoption years before. A mother said, on this website that she and her daughters had been looking for a son that she gave up for adoption many years ago. She said she thought that her, her son was maybe not wanting to be found. But she says, I just wanted my son to know that we want him to be happy. I want him to know about his four sisters and his one brother. The mother says, I may not be here on this earth much longer because I have a brain tumor and I just want my son to know that I am thinking about him. Just as this woman was working here to make herself known to her son and have a relationship with her son, so our God wants us to get to know him. Our God wants us to have a relationship with him. That's why the Apostle Paul says here, God is not far away from us. In God we live and we move and we have our being. Thirdly today, Paul asks the people of Athens to choose who their God is going to be. They had all these different gods and Paul says, choose which one is going to be your true God. That's really what Paul's asking you and me to do here today, isn't he? 
If Paul was here today, he'd be asking you and me to do the same thing. He'd say, I want you to choose who's going to be the true God in your life. Paul says here that God made himself known to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Paul says Jesus loves and cares about us. Jesus died on a cross to forgive every one of our sins. Then Jesus rose from the dead to overcome the fear of death and to give us the certainty of knowing we're going to have eternal life with him in heaven. And God wants us to put our faith and our trust in Jesus because Jesus is the only true God. Sir Gordon Gugesberg was a British Army officer who became the governor in Ghana, Africa, back in 1919. One day a friend came up to him and said, I know that you love your country. And I know that you always want to get to know the king of Africa. What I'm curious about is why you never want to know who the true God is. And Sir Gordon said to him, well, how do I get to know who the true God is? And the friend said, you get to know who the true God is from this book, the Holy Bible. In this Bible, it tells you who the true God really is. And you can talk to that God. You can pray to this God, and you can get to know him. Well, Sir Gordon did that. He started reading in the Bible, he started praying to God, and he became a believer in Jesus. And he made a big difference to the people there in Ghana, Africa, years ago. Now, if there was anyone who knew what it meant to know the true God, it certainly was the Apostle Paul here, wasn't it? Because before he came to know the true God, you remember, he was persecuting anyone anyone who believed in Jesus as the promised Messiah. But once Paul came to know who Jesus was, he gave the rest of his life to sharing with those around him that Jesus really was the promised Messiah. He really was the Savior of all people from sin and death. He let them know who the true God was. These words from the Apostle Paul are for you and me here today. Because today, God wants us to know him. God wants to have a relationship with us. And God wants us to accept him as the only true God in our lives. Today, many people want to be their own God. They want to be able to decide whatever's right and wrong. They want to be their own God. Other people today, they worship other deities as their God. But there's only one true God. I encourage you today to put your faith and trust in him because God is not an unknown God. He's our creator. He's the one who saves us from sin and from death. He's the one who lives inside of us and helps us to live out our Christian lives. Accept that God as the true God in your life again here today. God bless you as you do that. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.